Let's learn in this lecture session about Azure Application Gateway for Containers. Azure Application Gateway for Containers is a new load balancing solution in Azure for exposing services within an AKS cluster. Azure Application Gateway for Containers aims to be the evolution of the existing application gateway with Ingress Controller. It supports the new Kubernetes resources, which are the Gateway API. However, the existing today application gateway does support only Ingress, does not support Gateway API. Let's see in this lightboard session how this new service works. Let's get started. I start first by explaining the ingress model within an AKS cluster. So let's say here I want to expose a service using the ingress, I expose the services to my end users. So I would have here my user who will connect to a load balancing uh, solution. LB where we would have here a public IP address and that could be one of the options would be an Azure application gateway. Then the app gateway will handle that resource into the ingress. The ingress here will define the rules for exposing the service. So I would have an ingress resource within my cluster and then that ingress will route the traffic to a service within my cluster. So I would have here a service and the service could also route the traffic into one or multiple pods on my deployment. So I would have here pod number one and pod number two, for example, as many pods or as many replica I have in my deployment. Here we said one load balancing solution would be the Azure Application Gateway that would be described actually within an ingress class defined in my cluster. So I would have here the ingress class resources. So that is the ingress model. Let's take a look now to the other, the new model, which is the Gateway API model. With Gateway API, I will still have, of course, the user who will connect to my exposed applications. This user, again, will connect to a load balancing solution. And here, as we said, Azure Application Gateway does not support the Gateway API. It does only support the ingress resource. So for Gateway API, it would be supported by the new Application Gateway for containers. And now that traffic from the load balancer will be routed into, instead of using the ingress here with the ingress uh, uh, API, we would be using the resources that comes with the gateway API. So at first we would have a gateway resource right here, which is the main component. And again, the gateway will define the load balancing solution through a configuration class called the gateway class, as we have here with the ingress class. Then instead here of routing the traffic directly to the service, the gateway would define actually one or multiple HTTP routes. So we would say here we would have a new resource called HTTP route. We would have one or many and from that HTTP route we can route the traffic to the service and then to one or multiple pods. So here's like we have just replaced the ingress with two other resources that are the gateway and the HTTP route. But doing this have multiple advantages. First advantage is the separation of concerns. Before with the Ingress API, we were not sure if the Ingress resource should be part of the project team or the platform team resources. Now with the gateway API, we know that HTTP route would be the responsibility of the project team. So it would be part of the namespace managed by that team. So all of these resources, the service, the pods, the deployment and the HTTP route would be part of the uh, project team. So they would have the airbag model and the airbag uh, assignments to manage these resources. Sorry. And for the gateway, the gateway class, those are would be managed by another team. Let's say that would be the platform team. So the platform team will prepare the resources to be consumed by the uh, project team or the application team. And then for the load balancing, so this would be actually the uh, responsibility of the operations team or the infrastructure team. So here we have clear separation of uh, concerns. A second advantage that this adds is that now with the gateway and using the HTTP route, we can have advanced features like splitting the traffic. So here for the, I can define an HTTP route that says I want to have, let's say 20% uh, of the traffic going to the service one and I can have 
80% of the traffic going to a second instance of my service that can have also its own pods. And of course, it supports MTLS, airbag model, and so on. And now I'll explain the difference between the old application gateway with the AGIC, application gateway ingress controller, and the new application gateway for containers that supports the new gateway API. Let's start first with the old model. So with AGIC, that is the extension we use for application gateway. So we would have our AKS cluster, and then we would have also our app gateway, which would be somewhere here. We should create these resources using Azure uh, Atom. And the app gateway, its role is to get user traffic. So the user will connect there to the application gateway uh, IP, and then the app gateway will route the traffic to the pods inside my cluster. So how does that work? So first, with the app gateway, for ingress, we have the AGIC component that is installed inside the cluster, that is a pod running inside the cluster. The role of this pod is that it will watch for any resource created of type ingress. So when the project or the, uh, the application team creates a new ingress resource, that AGIC will go to detect that new resource created. And because here I might have one or multiple pods that I want to expose, so I would go to create those pods, create the services also, and so on. So Ajik will watch for these uh, components. It detects that I have a new ingress resource created here. That means that I want to expose a service. So it will go to talk the app gateway in order to configure it to expose that service. And it will do that not directly, but it will need to go through the Azure ARM. Azure ARM, that's the API for Azure. So it will need to connect to it. And then from there, it will go to connect to the control plane of the app gateway in order to configure the app gateway to route the traffic to these pods. So then that traffic will be able to reach directly those uh, pods right here, and then this pod right here. So the issue with the AGIC with this component is that updating the application gateway takes lots of time. It takes uh, about 30 seconds to update the new listeners and to update the new IP addresses for uh, these pods and so on. And the second issue is that it does only support ingress, doesn't support gateway API. So for that, we have now a new solution that is the app gateway for containers. The app gateway for containers will work using the same approach and the same concept as the application gateway ingress controller. So here I would have my AKS uh, cluster. And then here I would have the app gateway for containers. That is an Azure uh, resource. And then let's say here I have created uh, a service and I have created some resources in my cluster like pods, for example, or deployments. And I want to expose it. So I'll expose it through the service and then I'll go to create a new HTTP route resource. And I'll maybe have my uh, gateway resource, this one here that should live within my cluster to specify the configuration of the app. Um, gateway for containers. And I would have, like we have Ajik here, the uh, application gateway ingress controller pod, I would have a similar approach, but this one will be called ALB, ALB controller. The ALB controller is a pod deployed in my cluster. Its role is to watch for these resources. So it watches for these resources as the Ajik done does. And it will go to configure the app gateway for containers in order to expose those uh, uh, pods with respect to the HTTP route configuration. So here it will be able to do that directly by direct call to the app gateway for containers. It will call it in order to configure the app gateway for containers. It doesn't need to go through the Azure ARM. And then when it's configured, the app gateway for containers will be able to reach these pods because it is in the same subnet or in the same vnet or a period vnet as the AKS uh, uh, vnet. 
So having this direct link means that it's now more, it would have a better performance than using, using AGIC. But it's still, in one use case, it's still used that Azure RM in the case where I need, for example, to use bring your own gateway for containers. We know with application gateway for containers, we can either create our own gateway for containers, configure it manually, creating the front ends, creating the association to the uh, subnet, or we can let the ALB controller do that work for us. If we let ALB controller do that for us, this means that here in that specific use case will go to call the Azure ARM. But again, you would be doing this during uh, the creation of the uh, container. So it's just, you just run it once. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.